By popular request, we are going to be doing a uh, draft, actually. We're going to be doing, Dom oh, I almost said Dominary United. We are going to be doing a Brothers War draft. Oh, look at that. And uh, we could do, actually, the quick draft here and uh, try to get some value. If we're playing mostly constructed decks, quick draft is still kind of the best way to go about it if you're drafting for value as well as trying to get some cheap quick wins especially if you're not very familiar with drafting in general this is not a bad way to spin your currency in order to convert it into gems like when you're doing premier drafts you're drafting primarily to win and if you're kind of a weak limited player it's much better to do the quick drafts than it is to do the premier drafts and uh, it'll also teach you a little bit about how to draft in general you're not spending much currency in order to just get better at a format the thing is like the prizes are a lot weaker in the uh, quick draft than they are in the premier draft but that is a price that we pay to learn right so we're going to get into this quick draft here uh, we're going to do a combination of value drafting as well as drafting to win now i do want to add a little caveat here Right now that we have gold packs in the arena, whenever we're drafting, we are a little bit less interested in collecting all the rares and we're much more interested in converting our um, coins, our gold into, into gems. So we're gonna focus a little bit more on how to win. And we got our keeping in mind, bread. B-R-E-A-D, bread. What does that stand for? Bread stands for bombs, removal, efficient, aggro, and then duds. Duds are at the end. They're the last things that you want to be drafting. Um, and the bombs are going to be first, but kind of second now, right? That we are that removal is since removal is becoming so much more important so when we're looking at these packs what are we looking for right whenever we're looking through here we're looking for things that the opponent is going to have has a remove right um we're looking for something that the opponent has removed like the mox amber is not good at all for our efforts even though this is a mythic it's not good at all and if we look at the storm stone brain uh, it's not good and limited at all because, you know, you have to search target opponent's graveyard hand library for up to four cards with the name of the card that you choose, right? Any card and you exile them. <laughs> like that's going to be very, very, very um, circumstantial in a limited format such as this when you have 40 card decks that you're just kind of throwing together so what are we looking for instead of this kind of stuff right we're looking for stuff like the gixian infiltrator uh whenever another uh permanent whenever you sacrifice another permanent put a one one counter on the gixian infiltrator right that could be a way that we want to build this deck out and then of course you got this two one haste discard a card draw a card um yeah it's okay but i wouldn't say that it's over the top great now we need to talk about archetypes black and blue is concerned with drawing cards black and red is interested in sacrificing green and red is just gruel right black and white is more about creatures small creatures getting them onto the field this and that but we got to kind of play it by ear of what we're going to get. But be sure you keep in the back of your mind what each set is or each color set is trying to do. For our cases, I think the Scrapwork Rager or the Infiltrator is really good. Infiltrator, um, the Sack Deck, the Rakdo Sack Deck, I think is a little bit terrible when it comes to uh, limited formats because you don't have the the sack engine that you would otherwise do in like a constructed match right you just gotta play what you get so oh this card is really good the rager might be a little bit better they're both common so we might see multiple copies of them um rager works with everything so we're gonna take that this is what i'm considering just an efficient thing right for four mana draw a card you lose a life you can unearth him for four 
do it again. It gets two cards. So I like it. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to take it. Might not have been the best card there in that deck, but hey. Now, Hero of the Dunes is very good. So whenever he enters the battlefield, return artifact or enchantment creature, or, or creature card, sorry, with mana value three or less from graveyard to the battlefield, it gets something onto the battlefield and um, creatures you control with mana value three or less gets plus one, plus zero. Uh, this might be pushing us more towards a cheap um, creature deck. And uh, this is what you would call a bomb. Your opponent has to deal with this, otherwise your cheap little nothings are going to be doing all kinds of crazy stuff on the field, mostly turning sideways. Mostly turning sideways. I don't know how crazy that actually is, but it is a thing. Stormseeker I think is decent, but I think Hero of the Dunes is very much so better. And that might be our bomb in the deck. If we're doing something like that, we're looking for things like this a flash flying creature for two creatures you control get plus one plus one till the end of turn if you pay five it's another way to pump up all those little creatures that you were going to be having and uh this and that and i think we're going to step away from the trench stalker i don't know because we haven't really decided what we're wanting to be doing it yet we have one card that draws cards we have one card that makes small creatures bigger maybe we're are still going after this stuff. So I'm gonna pick this up just in case. This is a just in case. It's kind of like this or this. And again, we are getting none of the small little creatures that we kind of wanted here. None at all. Maybe Prospector is decent. But we not, don't have any big payoffs that cost a lot. That's an artifact right, right now, so. Maybe passing on that. Maybe grabbing the Aronaut Calvary. Get a plus one, plus one on another target soldier that you control. It is a common. It's three, four in the air. So I, I don't see any reason why not to take that. This costs five for a four, four, and you can unearth for four. Yeah, it's just... When he leaves the battlefield, gain two life. Not a super exciting card, but a little bit of life gain in there. And uh, able to take out most things. But this evasion, right? That's the E in bread. Uh, we're going to probably go with this. And we need to find some cheaper things in here, like the paratrooper. Any other ways to draw cards? The the Rager can, comes back. I like this, and I like this. But I really like the Courier as well. So you can put him out on turn one, sack him, unearth him, put him back into play. But we don't have any other blue cards right now, which means that this is probably well out. So we'll probably go with the Paratrooper. Also, in um, Limited, getting on top of your opponent really quickly is actually pretty good in most situations. Okay. This is a decent card. We don't really care about the Power Stones, but a 1-1 Double Strike that draws a card, you can't really beat it. So we're going to grab it, and we get another Hero of the Dunes. This is not a legendary creature either. But this is really good too. Like, this might be where we're going um, black and white. This could very well be that deck. Let's actually go with Hero. No, this is cheaper. And we need some cheaper cards here. So we're going to grab the Airlift Captain. And uh, that's kind of the thing that we're looking for right here. Mass production. Yeah, because this gives us more creatures. And the Hero of the Dunes makes them all two ones. Seems pretty strong in a deck like what we're doing right now. Bulwark would be good if we had uh, 
the blue. Calamity's Wake I don't think is good enough. Choose an artifact creature from their graveyard. Exile those cards. Dreams of Steel and Oil. Sounds pretty good. And it has that, that cool little Phyrexian symbol on it too. I like that card. But... We could use a Tower Worker to mana ramp a little bit. Or we could use a Celestial... Uh, coastal Bulwark. Coastal Bulwark. Um, to Servile. Don't have any legendary creatures, probably not going to get them. Mox Amber is an amazing card for zero. One mana of any color among legendary creatures and planeswalkers you control. Really like that. Planning on doing some historic stuff, but um, for the time being, that the, the video is not about that. So we are going to go with uh, probably the Tower Worker. We're not going to be able to really get the Mine Worker or the Plant Worker. But just a body that gives you a mana could be decent in a deck like what we're doing now. Combat Courier, of course. Um, here is a Veteran's Power Blade. Plus two, plus zero. Equipped for two. Equipped a Soldier for one. Could be okay. I think that what we're wanting to do is go with the courier though because we could get him back onto the battlefield with uh something like a hero of the dunes or the airlift chaplain so i think we could just continue the meme don't be afraid to go all in on kind of uh, a theme whenever you're doing this either I'm going to draw a card with the Soul Glide Lantern. I don't think it makes a deck, but it might. And now we go with the Onulet. Thought about that card a little bit earlier, but now is a good time to take it. Target permit becomes an artifact in addition to other types. Kind of worthless. Power Plant Worker. We got the Power Plant Worker now. There was a card that kind of cared about Power Plant Worker. Yeah, the Tower Worker. Now all we need is a um, Mine Worker. And coming through here, we'll grab this equipment here. It has more of a chance of making it protection from uh, multicolor. Whenever a non-basic land enters battlefield under an opponent's control, gain one life. It's pretty garbage but protection from multicolor might come in handy <clears throat> here's a blast zone blast zone might be really efficient a uh, way to kill all creatures but we get another mass production here I'm going to take the mass production over the paratrooper I think in hopes that we get something like Paratrooper again. Ah, oh, Recommission. Recommission seems are really strong here. There's a Power Plant Worker again. But... Yeah, Recommission. We gotta focus on smaller creatures if we're gonna do this. There we go. There we go. This is a good creature for this kind of deck. It's three mana, right, for 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, grabbing him for sure. Now we're looking for... This is pack two, but we're still going to be focusing mostly on small creatures. And that's it. There's another tower worker. A supply drop could be okay. This configure, though. Get a little bit of removal going. Yeah, because we're definitely running black. Yeah. There we go. A Fracture. Fracture over Vanguard. I think so. Removal is super important. You want to be doing as much removal as you can. And there we go. We got the Paratrooper that came back around. A lot of the stuff like... Like a Ambush Paratrooper, unless you have a very specific deck... It's not going to be as highly rated as a card that is a must pick. I do want that disconfigure, but I think the paratrooper is going to be super important. We need to get a lot of creatures that are small. And so far, we haven't 
gotten enough of them to really be happy, to be satisfied. Yeah, carrion locust. Kind of the best for what we're doing. There's a card draw. Game one life. If you control, oh my god. We're definitely going for that mine worker, right? Power plant worker and tower worker. We have both of those. Did we complete the cycle? I think we did. <laughs> That's hilarious. Another ambush paratrooper. That might actually have to be a thing. We might actually have to do something with them. There's another power plant worker. Shoot, I mean, we're, we're picking up a lot of the, the, the cheap creatures like we're talking about. So we might as well pick up another power plant worker just to see if we can make it, like, work. Right? How fun would that be? There's a mill. The gnawing vermin might be okay. Even if we mill some of our early creatures into the graveyard, it's actually good for us. Flying haste for five, though. When you enter the battlefield, put one target card from a graveyard to the bottom of its owner's library. I don't like the effect, but supply drop might be the thing to do. This is Vigilance Ward 4 when he dies at eight mana. And you don't lose this mana between steps. Okay, I still think Supply Drop is better for our deck. Yeah, because this is kind of... This might be okay. It's Flying Haste, but it is 5. And our mana cost is really high right now. But I think we take this. We're going to put it on the sideboard for now. I don't think it gets run. Hey, we got the card anyway. <laughs> we got it anyway. And now Bone Saw is more of an opportunity than Gaia's Gift for us. And we're going to have to take that dude as well. This is neat. But it doesn't fit into any of our colors. We literally have to 100% dedicate at this point. I'm not seeing a whole lot here except for maybe this removal. Uh-huh. Maybe the Locust. Yeah. We're going to go with the removal. Kind of have to. This gets an artifact back. I think we have some artifacts, right? We have 10 artifacts. Chances of them getting played is pretty high. But it doesn't count for a three or less. Does that matter to me? This configure is also really good. Let's go with the removal here. Let's be safe. Here we go. Whenever you draw your second card, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. When he dies, return target another target creature with mana value less than or equal to him from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's good all around, but we got another Hero of the Dunes, and I think that we go ahead and take it, really dedicate to that. And the Vanguard. Cheap, efficient, kill zone Acrobat could also be a thing. What do we want more? This has Vigilance, and it's two costing, and this costs one more. Let's go with the uh, Phalanx. The Phalanx Vanguard. See, I learned how to say that word now. <laughs> Phalanx. Levitating Statue might be okay. Uh, we need three or less. And uh, not much is going to be maybe the Revenant. But we lose the effects of it. Let's see, what else do we have? Let's go with the Gigamole. It's decent. It's very decent. Like, you mill three cards. You may put a creature from among them into your hand. If you don't, put a 1-1 counter on it. 
This is a really good card, but we don't have any blue. And we haven't been focusing on um, grabbing any um, uh, mana fixing. The mana fixing in Brothers War is very limited. So, yeah, there is that. Huh. Survivor of Cor Corliss. Or maybe another Tower Worker. It does count for three or less. And we do have that little thing. Another Vanguard comes around. This configure, which I think wins here. Removal is going to go away really fast. Here we go. Here we go. Airlift Captain. Right. Any cheap, efficient creatures. Yeah, we got the Locust. Could be good to get rid of something out of a graveyard. Lauren comes back around, so this is whenever we grab her. And, of course, we're just filling out our deck with some extra stuff. Power Stone Fracture looks like the way to go here. More removal. We want to be able to remove basically everything. Destroy Artifact or Enchantment. Uh, how are we looking? 26 creatures, 10 non-creatures. Yeah, so we, we could definitely do that. Uh-huh. Nothing here for us. We'll just grab that. We're going to grab uh, this dude here. And, of course, Gaia's Gift is going to be the last one. Hurrah! Now, if you notice something that I did while drafting this stuff, is I tried to keep the mana cost as low as possible. We're probably grabbing things from over here and getting rid of them. I want this in the deck because we can cast this for three. That can go over here, and that's probably what we'll end up doing. It's just a way of drawing a card. Two mass productions seems really, really good for us. Two of these is definitely going to be in here. That goes away. Right. Creature card in the graveyard. We'll, we'll send that away as well. And I like the Aronaut Calvary. I think a little bit better than the Thrasher. It is a common. But it's a 3-4 in the air for 5, and you get a 1-1 one, one on something. Like, if we put the 1-1 one, one on the Thrasher, we're, we're looking pretty good. Right. Like, that back end of our deck is very strong. Hmm. Power Plant Worker, Tower Worker, and what was the other one? Mine Worker. These guys are cheap and efficient, and then the Power Plant Worker becomes a Juggernaut. This is kind of a bomb. We'll get rid of that. We want to draw the card. We could get rid of this as well. That cheapens our deck quite a bit. We have a lot to get rid of, though. Definitely want mass production. I thought I had a second mass production. Must have drafted something else instead of that second mass production. Like, do I have room in the deck for the power plant? I think I do, because I've never done it before, and I kind of want to. <laughs> and this gives us a lot of mana. This gives us some life. But what are the chances that we get all three of these cards in the hand at once? And I'm thinking pretty low. So we'll do something like that. That probably cheapens it up a little bit more, and it does. We don't need that. We want this to be mostly right down in here. This configure definitely stays in. What are we looking at? 17 creatures to non-creatures. For this kind of deck, we might want to give up something like this. Artifact or enchantment. We want all the destroyed things. Huh, get rid of one locust. What do we have to kill things? This configure. Uh, we're going to get this back into the match. It's not going to cost five. So 
This is deceptively expensive with 3.0. We're gonna guess this costs around three. If we get two creatures into the graveyard, it'll cost effectively three for a, an exile, right? Yeah, for an exile. Not bad. Draw a card, we need that. We don't have many ways to cycle. I guess that's something I should have focused a little bit more on. Target player mills two cards. That will probably be me. That goes away. That card's terrible and limited. Yep, we're going to play this. Still want that just because it's a nice little body. Let's do this. Separate our creatures from our non-creatures. These are our non-creatures. Destroy. Return. Destroy. Dest oh, we have three disconfigures. We'll get rid of one disconfigure. This is going, and two, we do have the two mass productions. Oh, yep, yep, don't want to do that. I wanted to do this. Cool. So this gives us 16 lands. Always run 16, between 15 and 17 lands uh, for limited formats. It may seem like a lot, but you don't have time to get, you know, mana screwed. There's no time to be mana screwed. Let's see, what land do we want? Let's go with the newest one, right? All right. All right, this one. And then we definitely want to get some black in here. Scrolling through the lands. Gotta love it. I like that one. Now, 58% of our deck is white. 38% is black. So we're going to do something like this. Nine planes, seven swamps, and uh, that should just basically do it. So we get an early mill with the chaplain, mass production for later in the game, a power stone fracture, maybe sacking the phalanx vanguard. I don't know, there's some things that we could do with this particular build, so, or this particular hand. We'll keep it. Probably going to flood out here pretty quickly. From the way it kind of seems. Get the vanguard down. <clears throat> Pardon me. That goes into the hand, right? Yeah, into your hand. Alright. Disconfigure already. And that's not good at all. Whenever he at attacks, this is actually a really decent card. All right, Thrasher looks really strong right here. I'm gonna draw a card off of it. He got some good early damage off on us. Overwhelming Remorse is terrible right now. Revelry, what is this? He exiles his own card, and I will block. Let's see. Every another known is put into the graveyard from the battlefield. Exile it. Created that power stone token. Okay. That's a big cost for what you just did. Swing. Nice little double strike action, and airlift chaplain. We're hoping for a creature, but we did not get one. Got rid of the Aronaut Calvary and another mass production. Not quite where we wanted to be. And he's back with his Harvester, baby. Right back to action. Now you pull him in, you might as well swing with him. Right. There he goes. And no blocks. Opponent is down to three cards in hand. Oh, nice! Two cards in hand. He really likes this card right here.
Very well done. This is back in his hand, so <clears throat> pardon me, jeez. He's gonna cast it again. Exile a card from opponent's graveyard, nothing really interesting. This is an instant that's gonna ca cast us f cost us four. We talked about that uh, when building the deck. Four for a removal, not the most terrible thing I've ever seen. He's gonna cast this again, he loves this card. And uh, there's the bigger boy that we really need to get rid of. Let's go ahead and do it. Swing. Alright, now let's fill this board up a little bit. Alright, swings. Yeah. <laughs> okay, buddy. You just do you. Alright, as an additional sacrifice a creature artifact, destroy. Nope, 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 nope. You have to target this first, and then this. He gets more power stones. Then, we swing. Nice and wide. Nice and wide. Exiling that. That goes away. I'm done with that card. Don't want to see it anymore. Okay. Gets a couple cards. Mana for turn. And uh, I think he's out of steam. There's another one of these. Like, what are you doing? What is the uh, logic in your um, deck here? Yeah, we'll just swing in. Opponent says good game. We will say good game as well. That means you're supposed to scoop. Or you're going to make me wait it out. Nope, there it is. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. He will survive by one. Yeah, he spent the whole game trying to protect the Ashnod's uh, Harvester. He is going to make me wait. <laughs> I will be back after turn and priority has passed back to me. There's no way I'm just surrendering here. No way. The priority has passed back to me, so here we go. In turn. Okay, artifact spells, such and such, costs two less to play. And go ahead and do this. Let's put the nail in the coffin. Got plenty of power stones. Swing. Ah, he's gonna wait again. Thresher will get in first, and that's going to be the final damage of the match. So, one and oh. One and oh. Nice way to start. Nice way to start. <clears throat> Got really good, good board coverage, too. Like, this is pretty solid. Ambusher. Nice little flash flying guy. Uh, Warlord Elite. Nice and cheap. Nice and cheap. Nice curve, too. Vermin. I want a mill. Oh, no. <laughs> Hero of the Dunes is now in the graveyard. That is uh, one of the uh, negatives. I don't care about that. I want to kill the Vanguard. Huh. So, we could just pass. Nah, 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 nah. Don't, don't do any of the crazy stuff. Okay. He can't pump the things. So we answer like that.
That, that therefore we could play the Warlord Elite next turn, tapping these two. Or we wait on the Warlord Elite. No, getting a 4-4 out that early seems pretty good. We'll take the damage. And this works by tapping these two. And now we have a 4-4. On turn 3. That is pretty good. Now how much you want to bet he tries to kill the Warlord Elite? And if he does, we kill this thing and da da da. I think we go like this. He takes it all. Do we want to kill something anyway? I don't think so. I don't think that really matters. We'll get the Aronaut uh, Calvary out next turn. Put a 1 1 on the Elite. This is three or less, so we can't get the uh, Hero of the Dunes. I think the deck was built around is in the graveyard. And we put it there ourselves. Hmm. Yeah, more evasion. We want to play this first so that we can pump the elite. One, two, three, four, five. He can technically kill the elite here, but it will be painful. Yeah, he's going to. Okay, what do we want to kill? That. And that. Yeah, and those other two dudes could just stick around. He's only got two mana, so he's stuck on mana, like, hard. So press the advantage when we have it. Oh, Hexproof and Indestructible. Very nice. I'm going to guess that uh, the uh, card that he scried to the bottom was not mana. But we are cut down the size a little bit. No mana still. Dude. Let's do this. Insult to injury, sir. Yeah. <laughs> He's back. Baby. Yeah, sweep for four in the air. <clears throat> and do we want to do anything else? I think we want to kill that Thopter, but no, 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 no. We have an advantage. <clears throat> we have a significant advantage. I am sorry. Bit of a cough, maybe. Oh, opponent says good game, and he is out. I will say good game. He was stuck on mana. 2 and 0, oh, though. So, I'm not going to complain. I've been stuck on mana so many times. So, apparently, I just read the thing. Apparently, there's uh, Magic the Gathering uh, people in here as well. People that work for the coast. They have an orange banner around their name. So, if you see an orange banner around somebody's name, that means they work for Wizards of the Coast. Didn't know that happened. Till the end of turn, target non-creature artifact you control becomes a 4-4. Four, four. That sounds like a good thing to disconfigure, but we will pass. <clears throat> Let's see if he actually plays some crap artifacts. That sounds like the kind of card that you want in a deck with a bunch of artifacts. Enters the battlefield, create a tapped power stone. When he leaves, sacrifice a power stone. Okay. We're gonna let him create the power stone. And now we will make him destroy the power stone. I mean, hypothetically this card could be okay. But yeah, let's go to intern. We might be able to get him to the alloy animist to die. There it is, the swing, the paratrooper, the block. Does he have a trick? He does! Oh, we snuck another card out of his hand, so that's not a bad thing. 
Vanguard, I'm more likely to give up the Vanguard than I am the uh, Combat Thresher. So we play that first. We have two mana left in hand, both black. I don't know how well we're going to be doing in this specific round. It's dead. Oh good, 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 good. This is two hand. Okay, let's see what we get. Of course, we got the Heliod. But now we got some pressure in the air. We might want to get rid of it to get rid of that Alloy Animus. I don't know. Seems like he's running a lot of removal. No blocks. We'll take the, the two damage. Now he's going to remove it, right? Oh, he uh, hits me in the face. Artifact or enchantment. One, two, three, four, five. There's sixth mana. We're actually going to play it slow. I'm going to play it slow because he's down to two cards in hand. And um, I want to see if I could get Combat Thrasher down for a 3-3 uh, three, three double strike. Alright. That's quite a shame. Maybe I'm being a little bit too aggressive. But we'll do this. Draw a card. And that's our 7th mana. That's, that's pretty solid. That is pretty solid. Yeah, we're gonna have to let that damage through. I think this is the one that we don't win. It happens. Okay. Pass prerogative. This is probably going to get Hexproof? Nope. He lets it go. Four, five, six. Here's seven. Combat Thresher. Okay. Draws a card. Mass production. That's really good. Now, the Thresher might be in some danger. Yeah, he is. Okay, that's very close to match right there. But I am going to continue to try. This. This comes out. Now we mill. And we grab... Another one. Then we play the Vermin. He has 26 cards left, I have 17. Go ahead and mill two. That could come back and bite us. And no attacks. We need a block for damage. Oh! I, I, I helped him win. Oh no. Well, here's the thing. Let's block here. And we have to block all for the damage. So this is the only block we could do here. I am still dedicated. I'm pretty sure I've been kicked out of this match. And uh, yeah, that's it, that's it. All right, two wins and one loss. <laughs> oh man, oh, we look like fools in that one. Fools, I tell you. Combat courier to start things off. Nice little early creature. You don't see a lot of one drops in limited. It's kind of hard to get little one drops in there they bulk up your uh, decks too much in my opinion 
Evolving Wilds is a great way to start just for that reason. And... We'll play the Courier. Aha! Couldn't have done this, uh... Couldn't have done it without you, buddy. Gets that good value off of um, the Harvester. Harvester's a pain in the butt to deal with. And he's such a pain in the butt that he brings him back the very next turn. And he exiles a carrier. Courier. The thing is, opponent is now up in um, cards. Actually, very much so up in cards. So he gets that back. Wait, no, he doesn't? Yeah, oops indeed. <laughs> I don't blame you. We'll go ahead and pass turn. Uh-oh. Prototype, Death Touch. He plays it plays it for two. I like this card. It's either a 5-4 or a 1-1 one, one Death Touch. All you need on Death Touch is a 1-1. One, one. I mean, to be honest. Okay. Yes. We'll swing it for one. Then we'll play the Rager. Really need to draw a good card here. Okay, Overwhelming Remorse. Could be some good removal later on. We're hoping to get two cards off of the Rager, so if he swings here, we block. Okay, there's a swing. Here's the block. Okay, well worth it. Well worth it. Oh, wow. Very, 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 very nice. Okay, so this is going to slow down what we were doing. Destroy the artifact. Disenchant that. And we'll swing in. Opponent looks like he's nearly um, out of steam. We're going to exile that. And now we have two creatures with evasion in the air. Slows me down a little bit. But while that's happening, I will honor. Draws another card. It's a good one. Certainly is a good one. And we'll in turn. Gnawing Vermin, I don't want to really mill right now. And I don't want to mill the opponent. Don't want to give him that advantage again. Oh yeah, that's what we needed. Get this out. Hero of the Dunes. First time we got to play it, and we might not get to. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, you, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> I kind of have, you know, build out the board state real wide. Make the opponent deal with this. Okay, Warlord's Elite. That's actually not bad to get into the graveyard. Yeah, okay. It was too good. It was too good. It had to be removed, right? Passes turn. Okay. I could make him just deal with the board state. But... I really need to get this cavalry out, get more evasion, get more air power. Yeah. And then swing in for what? That's five? That's going to put me at a five point lead. Though the board state is very much so me in the lead. And then do this. 
That's an extra four damage. That's it. That's game. Baby, three and one. So I've never really gotten seven wins in this stuff, but a lot of it's because, you know, I'll just sit here and play uh, Magic the Gathering all day long and uh, you get a little bit tired. You're tired. Huh, if we get one more land, this is pretty good. Yeah, because we have the Chaplain, we have the Thopter, or the Paratrooper, not a Thopter, the Thresher, then Mass Production later on, Overwhelming Remorse later on. And, uh, you know, when you run as many lands as I am, uh, it shouldn't be too hard to grab another land out of here. We did. We grow, grabbed a Plains. I would have preferred a uh, Swamp. An opponent almost has his entire hand already out. Let's see, sacrifice it. Look at the top card of a opponent's, or somebody's graveyard, probably mine. And then he draws a card. Okay. Is thou swinging? I will block. I know there's a lot of graveyard uh, reanimation stuff out there, but I still think it's worth getting that off of the field. 3-1 with Unearth. Okay. This is not a 2-2. Two -two. And it just goes to hand. But let's see what happens. It's pretty good. Yeah, there's a harvester. Always confuses me. I think it should still be here. This card should still be here because it is in, it, it is in the graveyard on Earth. Okay, so he has the card that uh, you can sack a creature, kill a creature. Very obviously has it. Mana for turn. Vanguard looks pretty strong here. It's a 2 2. Don't make a good block. And then Combat Courier. Ah, uh, Disconfigure. That's the one that he had. Okay. Wasn't expecting Disconfigure. Really wasn't. Overwhelming Remorse is becoming cheap enough to really be attractive. No. No blocks. We want to sack this. Okay. Bonus becoming pretty dangerous here. So... So this would die, and it would cost three. Disconfigure. We're going to do it like this. This goes away. Hypothetically, yep. Yeah. And then we're going to go to next. Definitely not attacking. We want to sack this. He pops his Mishra's a research desk and gets what? Mightstone. Ooh, that's good. That's good. If he doesn't choose Mightstone in the weak zone, I'm gonna wonder what is going on. He, yeah, what is going on? In this battlefield, pay any amount of life for an attack. Create an XX Phyrexiana Minion creature token where X is the life paid. Ha! Huh. Oh, that is actually really strong. We're gonna block. Then we're gonna sack. 
doesn't have trample, so. Disconfigure, huh? How much life are you gonna pay? Five. Kind of want to do it like this. We're so close to getting that off though. As a 3-3. Three, three. He paid five life. So we have to try to get the disenchant. We did not. We can disconfigure. Hmm. Yeah, creating those uh, little 4-4s four is going to be really good. He does not wait. He can do it on his turn. Okay, remember that. He's trying to be sneaky. But do they have flying? That. And no attacks. He's going to create the thing. That's a really good card. And chumpy chump. Okay, we're still in this. Not by much, but we're still in it. We gotta find a way to get rid of a lot of different things if we wanna win this match. Yep, there's two of them. Scary news indeed. Let's try to find a way out of this. That ain't gonna do it. I think we die. No attacks. We'll stick. We'll play. We've got to keep the Thrasher around. That's a good one. Phyrexian Processor. Anybody unfamiliar with that card? Great card to draft, apparently. Disenchant, but it comes too late. We found our way around it, but it was about three turns too late from what it seems like. Yeah, all right, cool. Well, we, we lost one. We lost one. It's three wins, two losses so far. Stopter, um, Hero of the Dunes, the Calvary, and a disc configure for early game. Oh, no. What? Oh, yes, 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 right. Let's get that straight off of the field. We don't want to be playing with that at all. Very dangerous card. Especially if you built this whole deck around that card. You very well could have. Swifter boots. Swift boots. And my childhood memories are back. Swift foot boots. Equipped creature has haste and hexproof. Very strong card. And uh, a motorcycle did just pass by, if you heard that. Yeah, I live in a place that has like motorcycles all over the place. My god, they are everywhere. But uh, it's right next to the Great River Road. It's a really pretty place. Grew up around this area and just fell in love with this particular city. I know this has nothing to do with magic. <laughs> Yeah, swing in for one, and the Rager comes in, scrap work Rager, gets to draw a card off of it. Really? I wouldn't have done that. I would not have done that. I'll draw another card. I know Hero of the Dunes would be cool right now, but we got to build out a board state. Um, I will decline. Make him a 2-2 in the air. That's strong too. Mana. There we go. Swing in for 
three more. Opponent down to 14. And he is really stuck on land. Wow, a lot of people have been getting stuck on land. I didn't notice until just now that opponent was very stuck on land. And we don't know how to draw anything except for land, so I guess they both have their ups and downs. Yep, gets him down to three. He's up to five. Hero of the Dunes really putting in some heavy work here, making everything just a little bit bigger. That ain't gonna do it, buddy. That ain't gonna do it. Always put enough lands in your um, decks. 16 is the sweet spot for me. It's always 16 for me. Mm, 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 mm. Disconfigure, all right. Paratrooper has been a uh, kind of staple in our opening hand. Airlift Captain or Chaplain. Uh, okay, we just need to draw lands. How hard can it be, right? See, it's easy to draw lands. You just have to be good at drawing cards. Like if you're not good at drawing cards, I mean, it's gonna be a rough day for you. All right. We'll play this on the opponent's turn. We don't want him to see what we have, but he's probably pretty well figured it out. All right, he creates a 1-1. One, one. I'll get this going. Yep, he's got a big cycling um, thingamajig going on. Very interesting opponent. Very interesting. Neat little mechanic, you know. Return this to the hand, put it down again, get more cards out. But it seems like one of those loops that's just a loop to be a loop. Let's see what we could get. Yes. Another paratrooper. Swing in. Oh, a little ping of damage. Nice little poke. Okay, Junkyard Genius. Very interesting. Sacrifice another creature artifact till the end of turn. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Gain menace and haste. We're not blocking. Okay, we got the fifth mana. Before your turn starts, I want to do this. Now swing. Right, then locust. And we're going to get rid of the junkyard genius. We got a lot of power in the air. Yep, he sacks one of the thingamajigs. He gets land. This opponent is not stuck on land, so can we win when the opponent is not stuck on land? He gets whatever that is. This is that. This is a pretty good card. The Cinder Maw. Giant Cinder Maw. Oh, no blocks. You're good to go, man. Okay, mana. Hero of the Dunes. Such a good card. Especially for limited. Wow. Just really pulls his own weight. Hey, that is not fair. He unearths um, the Mishra's research desk. Like, I see what he's trying to do here, create an engine. Well, that's really hard to do in limited. Well. Okay. Disenchantment is fantastic for us to draw. Huh. So we could pump for five. We have five mana. That would do three, four, five, six, seven damage. Put him at nearly fatal, but then we won't be able to kill something. But I think that we're okay with the board state. This could be too greedy. This could be really greedy. We're gonna swing in, get him down to two. This, that could have been super greedy and cost me the game. Uh, 
Okay. Anything else? He's gonna try for something. <laughs> oh, sometimes greed pays off, guys. Sometimes greed pays off. All right, two white mana. We got the Vanguard though, and we haven't had any trouble drawing mana. And this is, again, really greedy keep. But just how uh, how we've been drawing it probably causes me to uh, play a little bit sloppy here. Now, see, just, there it is. There it is. What does this do exactly? An interest battlefield, put a what? Or it's put into the graveyard, draw a card. Okay, so he gets to draw two cards off of that. We're gonna disconfigure that for sure. Okay. Do you want the Vanguard or do we wanna do Paratrooper um, during the end step? I think we do Paratrooper during the end step. Okay, another one. Still slowed him down. Going to my turn, we're gonna get the Ambusher Paratrooper down. Another mana. And this is where we want to Rager, I believe. Draw a card, seems powerful. And now we could trade with the Infiltrator. Got a mana, okay. Opponent looking around. Awesome, he kills the scrapwork rager. Is that exiled? No, it's just destroyed. Which actually saves us some trouble of killing it. But With the way the board state is right this second, we want to get this guy down for sure. And do we want the paratrooper or do we want the thrasher? Three, four, five. I don't have the sixth mana in hand, but we, I think the paratrooper is going to be better. It's got evasion. It's in the air. If we could get the Combat Thresher down for a bigger, I mean, a 3-3 three, three double strike that draws you a card is pretty strong. Yeah, I will block with him. Uh, okay, he's got removal. He's trying to figure out what to remove. Lotus. Different than I expected. Do you swing? No. He's smarter than that. Let's get Hero of the Dunes out. Swing with our paratroopers. He probably chumps with the or trades with the with the locust. That's what I would imagine is gonna happen right now. There's a block. Nice trade for him. Nice trade for us. And we can just get that paratrooper back out onto the field. Oh, that's pretty nice. I'm going to give him a little one of these. That's pretty good. He might kick us out of this. He's playing in bronze, so like I kind of like rooting for him. There's more mana, not big enough yet for that, but we can do mass production.
I think we just try to stay high. Put the paratrooper back out. Swing in the air for one whole damage. One, two, three, four, five, six. I could hold off for a few turns from putting the combat thrasher out. This guy looks to be mono black. Really, disciples of Gix. Ornithopter and the Drake go to the graveyard. And we get the mana. Moving on. Each opponent loses two life. I could do that. Combat Thresher. Let's draw ourselves a card. Gets another mana. Ugh. We're, we're a little heavy in mana right now. That Disciples of Gix is pretty good for the opponent. That's a pretty decent card too. Should I give up my Thresher? Thresher's not going to end the game for me. I trade him off. Yeah. Sometimes you have to let a, you know, let a decision like that settle a little bit before you're really comfortable with it. I'm barely comfortable with the idea of letting him go like that. He does have something in his hand. He's going through his graveyard now. And he gets the Gex back. Okay. Alright. Good going opponent. The Phyrexian. Enchantment or whatever. If I activate this? No, we want to get this done right now. Yeah, like he just trades off with something. He just dies. So we didn't want to be swinging with him. I just want the soldiers, next turn we pump. But we gotta survive until next turn. Beginning if there are three or more creature cards in your graveyard, put a one one counter on him. That is too slow for this stage in the game. Swinging, swinging. He sacks that. That gets a 1-1. One, one. I think that this is the correct move. No, wait. Let's think here. He's got four mana up. He cannot cast this. If I take all of this, this is seven, right? And we do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, no blocks. But he, he blocks two, so more like 13. And he could probably do this as well. So that's seven, eight, nine. Because we know what he has in his hand, right? So he's going to do nine damage. And I'll survive by two. If I'm counting correctly, I am not good at math. Math is not a strong suit. I am an American, right? And that does two damage. He does not do it. Okay. Pump. All right, swing. Str 
straight up. Okay, he blocks three, then he can block two more. And that's two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven damage. Yeah. I take two here. Good game. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. That was, uh, you know what? Dude was a bronze player, but my God, did he give me a big fight for my money down to two life. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I thought he had me. Like, that was good. Paratrooper, Vanguard, Disconfigure, uh, Power Stone Fracture. Okay. This is the typical hand we've had the entire time. I'm going to hold this configure up. I think knowing vermin is a little bit better at turn three, turn four, depending on what we have. If we don't have anything to do. Knowing vet vermin could be that thing. Okay. Let's go ahead and end turn again. See if he plays a creature. If so, we disconfigure. Well, we don't disconfigure on that. That's a good card. Well, this is your turn. If you control four more mountains, it gets plus X plus yada da. And this is where the vermin comes in real good handy. Right? Because this turn we can do something like this. We're going to target ourselves, I think. Rager goes out. And also get the Vanguard out. Yeah, as long as you control four or more mountains. Uh-oh. He's a draw um, deck. We got two disconfigures as well. Let's see what he decides to do if I did something like this. He's going to block. He's just trying to figure out what he wants to block. He's going to block the vermin. Which allows me to disconfigure on the anointer. And get the anointer off the field. Like I wouldn't have given up the anointer that easily. Alright. Aeronaut's wings. Oh no mana. You gotta be heckin' with me. Swingin'. And we can do this and I think just to have some uh, some tempo we do do that. Yeah. Not quite sure. That happened really fast. He should have had first strike on it. So he should have been fine. No mana yet. Swing. With the big boss, you can never have mana. Thresher? Yeah, get the Thresher out there. Give me luck. No, negative, no mana. Lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. Maybe the airlift captain will get us some mana. We're swinging. Opponent is down to eight. And the airlift captain, or chaplain. I keep calling it a captain. No, we still did not get the mana. That's insane. But we did get a warlord's elite. So, I mean, opponent is down to eight. We we're just way too fast for the opponents, it seems like. Yeah, let's just go in and swing. My luck on the arena has been really weird all day. That's it. That's it. Oh my god. I did it. I 
did it. So, holy crap. Yeah, Brothers War is uh, quite an interesting one to draft with, right? Like, literally, we just grab some bigger dudes like uh, Hero of the Dunes. That makes my small dudes bigger. Same with the um, uh, Paratroopers. Thresher draws some cards. A uh, bunch of removal. Calvary pumps a thing. Rager draws some cards, right? And what you're wanting to do is really hypothetically you want to keep this under three but with the prototype cards i mean that's really indeterminate at this point but make sure you're drafting things that you could play all the time and always have a good mana base uh, that's gonna be key this is my very 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 first time in magic the gathering arena uh, completing a complete draft i'm really happy about that like, usually I stick on five, six wins, but my god, we made a profit. We made a profit, and we got a bunch of free cards. I can't really c complain too much. Thank you for joining today. Thank you for joining me in today in uh, the, the arena. It was uh, my pleasure, as always, to bring you um, content, especially tutorials, what to do, how to do it. That's kind of what we do here for the most part, and I'll bring the like, occasional big deck to the table just to play around and uh, have some fun. But uh, yeah, I'm out of words. Make sure you like, make sure you've subscribed, and I will see you next time in the arena. Bye.